excellence, strategy deployment, product and service quality and innovation. He holds additional charge of CSR and business sustainability. A business performance improvement professional with 25 plus years of experience, he has worked in various geographies, including India, North America, Japan, and Singapore. Before joining Tata Teleservices, he was with Tata Business Excellence Group in Tata Sons, where he was leading group-wide deployment of the Tata Business Excellence Model and Tata Best Practices Program. He was also responsible for digitalization of group-wide initiatives, corporate communications, and shared services functions. Prior to joining Tata Sons, he was head of business excellence in Trend and played a key role in turnaround of company. He led various transformation projects in the areas of supply chain, strategy development, franchisee management, and digitalization across retail formats. Before that, while the Tata Consultancy Services, he managed various IT and technical communication consulting assignments for Fortune 500 clients in retail and BFSI domains. He also worked with the pre-sales team across sectors to improve quality and reduce response time of proposals. During his stint at Computer Associates, he played a key role in setting up an integrated quality management system for the organization. He started his career as a journalist and has worked with newspapers like The Telegraph and Amrita Bazar Patrika. He graduated with honors in physics from the University of Calcutta and went to an executive PG program in international business from Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta. He's a certified manager of quality and organizational excellence from the American Society of Quality and has completed 15 plus TBEM assessments from various Tata companies. Sir lives in Mumbai with his journalist wife, Shabanti, school going daughter, Sneha, and retired father, Sunil, and with a loving dog, Scrampo. He is an avid reader of non fiction and music enthusiast. Thank you. I would like to give a warm welcome to you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Rakhi, for the warm welcome and the nice words you said about me. Thank you. I will uh, try to share my screen now. Uh, just... sir, I would like Rakshita, just a second, sir. I would like sure. Rakshita to tell, tell the ground rules for all our panelists and the participants. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so good evening to our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Saurav Chakrabarti sir, Dean sir, faculty and my dear friends. This is Rakshita R. from MBA semester 2, Diana Saga University. I'm here to tell the rules of the road. I'm really sure you'll be keen on asking questions, so please post your questions in the chat box or Q&A section provided below. Sir will be taking few relevant and common questions in the last 15 minutes of the session. I can assure you before and that it is going to be an interesting session. With this, I would like to hand over the platform to our speaker. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Rachita. <clears throat> Just let me know when my screen is visible. Looks good. Okay. Thank you, sir. So good evening, friends, and a warm welcome to all of you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to interact with all of you, go on a virtual platform. What I'm going to talk about today is vision, mission values, a practitioner's perspective. And here I would like to you know, distinguish or set the expectations right. What I'm going to talk about today it's just my experience. The way I have experienced mission, mission values across companies and the way some of the good practices that I've seen in the organizations that I've worked. Feel free to pose your questions, clarifications, doubts in the chat window. I will take pauses at each logical juncture and you can feel free to ask me questions. So what we will cover today is, let's say we'll have a five point agenda for the introduction. We will look at the importance of purpose. We will talk about vision, mission values. We'll look at a few case studies and then we'll have a quick Q&A session where you can ask more questions. So 
you know, I love to, uh, you know, being a physics student, I have always loved to look at things ab initio or start from the basics. So when I think of purpose, I think of vision, mission values, when I think of strategy, I realize that it completely depends on purpose. So let's look at what purpose means. If I look at the dictionary definition, Purpose means the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. You know, if you think of it, the picture on your right hand side, that of a matchstick, is a purpose of the matchstick to light up and fire, as all of you will agree, is probably the greatest invention that mankind has seen. But if I use the matchstick for purposes other than what it is intended for, consequences can be catastrophic. Exactly the same thing happens when you forget the purpose of an organization, of an individual, of a family, and try to do something else. An organization has a purpose, and if you don't follow its purpose, you land up in very difficult situations. To give you an example, think of some of the greatest companies in the 90s. Enron was a huge company, one of the biggest companies, but they fell flat on its face. Why? Because somewhere the purpose got lost and they started engaging in unethical practices. Toyota Motor Company, in the world's, I would say, the most reliable automobile company in the world. But in the earlier part of this decade, or last decade, uh, to be precise, 2019, around that time, Toyota ran into difficult situations. You must have read about cases where there a lot of people were died, a lot of people died because of accidents which led to a brake pedal problem, a floor mat problem, and so on. And you know why that happened? That happened because somewhere down the line. In their purpose, their purpose was to make the best cars in the world, but they changed their vision or goal from being the best automobile manufacturers to being the largest automobile manufacturers. So they lost their purpose and the consequences are known to all of us. A family has a purpose, an individual has a purpose. So the first step towards vision, mission values is to identify the purpose. Why do we exist as an organization, as an institution? Why do we exist? Once you have the purpose right, then the rest of it falls in place. And bear in mind, the purpose is not a statement that's just up there on the wall. You have to follow it, you have to practice it day in day out. If you don't practice it, if you don't follow it day in day out, what happened to Enron, what happened to Toyota, what happened to a lot of companies. Within India, you can think of Kingfisher as a good example. What happens if you don't follow your purpose? And each company can have a different purpose. There's no hard and fast rule that I have to be a company. I mean, I have my purpose should be pompous, should be nice sounding, giving back to the society. I will do good for everybody. I don't, I need not have that purpose. So let's Take two examples. One of the organization that I worked for 20 for 20 years in my career, and the other company is Bosch. You would have heard of this company. It's a German conglomerate or behemoth, whatever you want to say. Interestingly, you know, Bosch and Tata, the purposes are very similar. If if you just read through the purposes, Bosch says our products and services are designed to spark enthusiasm, improve quality of life, and help natural resources. What does Bosch manufacture? Bosch manufactures a lot of products that goes into making an automobile. So what are the elements they're talking about? We want to deliver top quality and reliability. In short, we want to create technology that is invented for life. You think about the purpose. That is why Bosch exists to improve the quality of life, to help conserve natural resources, top quality, reliability, keywords which define Bosch. 
look at the Tata group, which I represent. The Tata philosophy of management has always been and is today more than ever that corporate enterprises must be managed not merely in the interests of their owners, but equally in those of their employees, of the consumers of their products, of the local community, and finally of the country as a whole. J.R.D. Tata, our past chairman, had Bharat Ratna had commented. <clears throat> and that's the driving purpose of the group. And if you relate to, if you read both these statements, Bosch, a company completely different in Germany, Tata, an Indian conglomerate. But you see where they come together, the purpose, quality of life, national resources, Tata has talked about community, Tata has talked about serving everybody, employees. So somewhere these two companies work with the same purposes. Let's look at two other companies. Blackout, an investment banker, venture capital fund, one of those financial conglomerates. What do they say? Their purposes, our purpose is to help more and more people experience financial well being. Together with our clients, we are contributing to a more equitable and resilient world today and for generations to come. I've never worked in BlackRock, but it's very clear where their focus is. They want to ensure financial well being. Are they talking about conserving national resources, communities, and all? No. But their approach is very different. They're saying that I will make financial, I will make everybody, more and more people, experience financial well being. Thereby, they will contribute to everything. It's a very different purpose from what Bosch wants to do, what the Tata Group wants to do. G, General Electric. While I've never worked in General Electric, I've worked for a number of clients for their purposes. We rise to the challenge of building a world that works. Building a world. And think of the businesses that G is in. General Electric manufactures aircraft engines. They manufacture medical equipment. They are power distributors, they manufacture a lot of, they're into financial services, a lot of other products. So, they want to build a world that works. Very interesting purpose statements, very different. But you see, think of it, if you were to devise a strategy for them, if you were to devise a vision, mission, value for them, would they be same for all of these companies? Can you have a one size fit all solution? No. Because the purposes are very different. Professor Shankar has a comment to make. I agree that purpose is the key to begin and sustain for any organization. How does one keep track if the organization they're involved in is losing sight of its purpose? Thank you, Professor Shankar. It's a very interesting question. And you know, I will relate it to a scam that. The Indian IT industry has seen, you know, the Satyam scam. Satyam, the name itself kind of spoke about the purpose, truth, Satyam. It stands for truth, it stands for, I, I, I don't recollect the exact words mentioned in their purpose, but it was to do good for the customers, consumers, employees, everybody. But where did they go wrong? Somewhere they lost track of the purpose. And all the checks and balances also stopped working. What were the checks and balances? There was an international audit firm which was doing the regular audits. They failed to highlight the things that were going wrong. They were independent directors, they were members of the board and all. I mean, they were there very strong board. They could not, they failed to highlight. And of course, the employees, they failed to highlight that things were going wrong. So I think collectively, it's all our responsibilities to ensure that we are on track. And that is why, you know, just before the starting of this session, uh, Professor Nagaraj Rao and I were having a discussion on creating a set of metrics that look at long-term value creation. And I had attended a talk by Paul Goldman, the 
former chairman of uh, Unilever, where he spoke that you can have a long-term vision. And he was giving the case of Unilever themselves, where they had a 2030 vision. And this talk happened a few years ago. He said that that is a long-term vision, but that does not mean I can stop uh, capturing the short-term metrics. So it's very important to look at both and also kind of uh, put the constant controls in place. So what is your purpose? All of you, and I will encourage all of you to think of what is your purpose in your personal life, in your professional life, for your organization, for your institution, for your team, for your department. What is your purpose? Why do you exist? When you think of that, you will be able to think of what could be the target of your distribution value and so on and so forth. Unless you have your purpose statement clear, you will not be able to move to the next stage, which is the vision, mission uh, values. So let's move to the vision, mission, values part. And this is where I will, again, there are multiple theories and there are multiple papers about what is vision, what is mission, and what is values. I will try to break it down into some simple statements describing the way I have looked at it or I have experienced it. So vision statement typically, and we will take up some cases, is all about what do I want to do, by when I want to do, and doing what. So let's take an example of you know, the company where I worked for for almost a decade, TCS. In 2002, TCS had a very, very ambitious vision. It sounded very ambitious then. To be top 10 by 2010, to be in the top 10 of IT companies by 2010. So that time it was really ambitious. You know, TCS had only 25, 30,000 employees. It was really touching a billion dollar revenue. And it was really, I mean, you could not even think of IBM's Accenture's of the world and Capture and that kind of thing. But you know, the way it was defined so clearly all of us still remember it and it was achieved, it was achieved before 2010. So, vision would be what is being done, by when and how through IT services, a retail company may say by being the apparent market and so on. Vision statement is about how am I going to achieve it. You know, for example, TCS's mission statement was to Create technology cutting edge solutions and create, make it a joy for all stakeholders to work with us. So that was the mission statement that I will do IT services and make it a joy for everybody to work with us. And values are timeless principles that will help me achieve my vision. Integrity, pioneering, caring, sharing, all of these things. And together, the three of them will help me achieve my purpose. And just again, stepping back, vision tells me what I want to do, by when I want to do. And it's important to break the vision into these parts because then I become much more clearer in my mind. And the question Professor Shankar asked also that, what if a company moves away from its purpose? This will tell me that I move away from my purpose. Mission is how I want to do it, and based on the fundamentals of values, timeless principles that will help me achieve or reach my purpose, achieve my purpose. There is one more question from Professor Shankar. Hasn't G been sliding? G seems more towards finance than the customers. G has been exiting product lines over which they have had masters such as consumer doable, such as white goods. You're absolutely right, Professor Shankar. The G has been embroiled in a in, a, in an array of controversies, they have had very difficult things. Some say that they tried to expand too fast. Some of them say that they should have focused on their core line of business. You're absolutely right. 
but you know the strength of the behemoth is such that because they have their fundamentals right they will come back and they are coming back so that's that's going to happen and you know history has it you take up any company any conglomerate so you'll see that they have succeeded in some they have failed in some but the strength of the company is such that they will uh, they will uh, continue to exist long term value creation that's the key word and it's not a fly by night operation so coming back to vision mission and purpose let's take a hypothetical example for an individual you know this is the famous cam river and the cambridge university you know, the alma mater for many 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 noble causes you just going there makes you feel like going back to school and study so let's say you know if i when i was a student and unfortunately i did not pursue my interest in physics so if i were to draw up my personal vision purpose my purpose would be i want to become a physicist and all of us can do that you can work out your own purpose to become this what can be my vision and the vision bear in mind has to be something that's audacious you know in uh, colloquial terms sometimes it's called a bhag goal b h a g big hairy audacious goal you know it's like that giant in the room that it has to be audacious it has to be big so if i wanted to become a physicist and then there was no one stopping me from dreaming big my vision would be i want to win a nobel prize in physics by 2045 why 2045 so giving myself enough time that i have 25 years to go i can do my thesis i can work on it and the nobel prize is not that uh, just start and i win a nobel prize my mission statement now I, i know my purpose i know what i want to do within my purpose mission will guide me on how i will do it the how part will be to work on pioneering research in cambridge university under sir roger penrose and look at how the specificity is being built in the purpose is slightly generic i want to become a physicist very well so be a physicist who's stopping you be stopping me but within a physicist what would you like to be i want to win a nobel prize in physics by 2045 Okay, very nice. You want to become a Nobel Prize winner. You want to become a Nobel laureate. But how will you become one? Have you thought through that? I want to work on pioneering research. I will become a Nobel laureate by working on pioneering research in Cambridge University under Sir Roger Penrose, who is another Nobel laureate who won last year's Nobel Prize in Physics. And what are the values that I will? And the timeless principles. And this is perseverance. You know, Albert Einstein had famously said that success is ninety-nine percent perseverance, perspiration, and one percent inspiration. So perseverance is one value. Integrity is one value. I'll work hard. I will not adopt unscrupulous methods. Pioneering. I will work on cutting-edge research, and I will be collaborative. I will collaborate with. scientists across the world to do my pioneering research that i want so this again you know it tells me just to make it simple for all of you to understand mission will be what by when doing what mission is how i will do it and values are the timeless principles that will help me achieve my vision and then find my purpose of mission of winning a nobel prize and my purpose of becoming a good physicist so this can be a personal vision mission value exercise step back we were thinking of an organization we were discussing an organization so if i look at an organization again let's look at tcs as i said TCS's vision in 2002 was 
to be in the global top 10 by 2010. See how it had and the purpose of the data would be discussed. We we'll we can't cheat anybody, we will be good for the, all stakeholders. So vision was to be in the global top 10. Now, how will you define global top 10? Global top 10 of IT companies, IT service companies, there are parameters defined. That I will parameters defined that my revenue will be so much, I will have so many employees, I will serve so many Fortune 500 customers, my customer satisfaction will be at that level, my employee satisfaction will be at that level, and so on and so My mission will be to help customers achieve their business objectives by providing innovative, best in class consulting IT solutions and services. And so, how will I do that? How will I achieve my vision to be of to be global top 10 by 2010? I will do that by helping customers achieve their business objectives. So, I am taking care of my customers. How will I do that? I will do that by providing innovative best-in-class consulting IT solutions and services. And thereby, I will make it a joy for all stakeholders to work with us. It's simple. What I will do, who I will do, and what are my values, the timeless principles, that uh, that uh, will guide me in meeting my purpose. Let's look at another simple example. And I've taken up companies where I have worked because as I mentioned, this is a practitioner's perspective. This is how I've seen this organization succeed and this is how I've seen this organizations develop their VMB from the purpose and deploy it also. So let's look at another case study, Trent. Trent, as you know, is a... Saurabh, uh, one of our professors would like you to elaborate on unity a little bit. Sure, sure. Uh, as, a, as a value. As a value. Yeah. Last, last slide. I will just go back there. Yeah. So... If you think of the four values, integrity is very clear. Responsibility talks about sustainability, that I am a responsible corporate citizen. Excellence talks about how I am achieving it. I am not achieving excellent results, but I am also achieving it in excellent in an excellent manner. Pioneering talks about I am first in the market. And unity talks about a lot of collaboration, a lot of connecting it to the larger purpose and so on. That I am not achieving it in a in a manner which will be non-collaborative or which will be you know divisive and which will be kind of uh, you know fighting with each other you know that's that's something that we we at the, at the group at the tata group we kind of stand up for and uh, kind of we we take pride in doing that So is that clear or would you like to elaborate a little bit? I mean, it's it should be it should be a joy for everybody. You know, it's not we don't exist just for our customers or just for our shareholders, just for I mean all stakeholders they come together, they collaborate. So let me let me give you an example. And I think this will uh, uh, this will clarify a part of your question. Uh, you know, Tata Steel in 2006, I think five or six, acquired uh, Porus, British Steel. And when it acquired Porus, Porus was three times the size of Tata Steel India. And there were a lot of apprehensions about, about uh, you know, an Indian company taking over uh, British steel or a European steel giant because they have huge operations in Netherlands as well as UK. So to, when we were doing that integration, and uh, I've never worked in Tata Steel, but I've worked with them as a consultant extensively. And then also I have a lot of friends who've told me this story. So the story goes that uh, a group of union leaders and a group of employees from Tata Steel Europe went to Jamshedpur to visit Tata Steel facilities and look at the various community development, the various CSR activities that they do. 
So when they went there, uh, they realized that that time the annual expenditure of maintaining the Tata Steel township, the ecosystem, the CSR activities, and all of that ran into hundreds of crores. So they, which had come from Tata Steel Europe, they asked uh, Dr. J.J. Irani, who was the then MD of uh, Tata Steel, that uh, Dr. Irani, you know, why are you spending so much money? Because this money that you're spending in maintaining the township and all your CSR activities and so on will otherwise go straight up into your bottom line and you will be so much more profitable. Dr. Irani's response was very interesting. He said, if you look at the last 70, 80, 90 years of our existence as an organization, we have never had labor problems. Though we are in the middle of a Naxal infested belt, we have never had trouble within our premises. It's like an oasis in the middle of a desert. And the only reason why we have reached that status is because we have taken care of everybody. The unity factor. It's not that we are just working for our shareholders, that's why we call expenses. We'll exploit everybody in the region. So that unity factor, I just gave an example of Tata Steel. I can tell you stories about all Tata companies because, you know, having worked in, this is my fourth Tata company, TCS, Trent, Tata Sons, the promoter company, the holding company, and then Tata Tele Services. You know, one factor that is common across all the companies are these five values. I have never seen any of these companies at any stage compromising on any of these. And unity being in my view, the biggest, uh, you know, binding agent amongst all of them. That we are not just working for one stakeholder, we are in a collaborative manner. That's, that's the response that uh, I would like to And I'll be happy to answer further questions. So, <clears throat> moving on to the next, uh, just conscious of time, so, Moving on to Trent. Trent is a retail company. Westside is one of the best fashion brands or the number one fashion brand in the country today. So what is Trent's vision? Trent's vision is to design and deliver fashion and lifestyle brands while always keeping it fresh. To design, which means that this company is designing apparel, deliver fashion. I'm not just good at designing, but I'm also delivering it and lifestyle brands while always keeping it fresh. So you are keeping it fresh in the sense <clears throat> you are refreshing fashion. You know, what was fashion today, tomorrow, it may not be fashionable anymore. So you will be surprised to know every week, every Friday, in a Westside store, you will be able to see at least 150 to 200 new dresses, 200 new shirts, 200 new types of, I mean, not just 200 shirts, it's just you know, dresses, silver kameez, shirts, trousers, 200 new products every Friday, week on week. What is the mission? Again, how will we do it? We'll do it by creating value for all stakeholders. In order to achieve this goal, we shall develop a comprehensive understanding of needs. And you see this whole how part is detailed. What we will do, how we will do. What is the missing part? The when part is missing. The when part is captured in while always keeping it fresh, which means every week, every seven days, we will refresh it. That's the when part. I mean, it's not explicitly mentioned here, but because I was part of the organization and the team when we crafted this vision statement, I know that is how the when part got captured. Always keeping it fresh. Every week, we will keep our merchandise fresh. So I will take a pause here before I move on to the next section and I will look at if there are any questions. Okay, maybe what I will do is, I will pick up these questions into, uh, uh, at the end once I, 
finish my talk uh, and no question is an irrelevant question if you ask me any question there's nothing called a bad question or an irrelevant, irrelevant question so in my in my experience i have seen five common pitfalls in vision mission balance statements the first one is espoused versus actual and uh, you know one of the case studies which professor nagraj rao kindly uh, has agreed to circulate also i was delighted to know that a copy is available with uh, the university it's something that we were also taught during my uh, uh, mba program, executive program that i did four seasons when four seasons went to paris is the title of the case what it tells is four seasons is an american hotel chain and they have very good very strong processes but <clears throat> what happened is when they went to paris you read it it's a longish case it's about 28 30 pages but it's a very very interesting case study it's a it's a i would say it's a hallmark case study in terms of strategic deployment i will just take one example from it so it talks about the difficulty of opening a hotel in paris how the regulatory environment was different how the employee engagement factors were different how customer expectations were different you know, i'll give you an example which a lot of us may laugh about but that was a big challenge for them apparently in france there's a rule that all employees have to be in daylight for at least 50% of their working time. So if it's an eight hour work shift, you have to be in a work, your office location has to be such that you get sunlight for at least 50% of that four hours. So four seasons have a challenge because a lot of their laundry, a lot of their other departments were in the basement where there was no natural sunlight. So they have to multi-skill people. So that four hours I work in the laundry, then for the next four hours I am the bell captain or I'm the receptionist in the, or in the lobby where there's natural light. So they're very, very interesting case study. But one thing I want to talk about is a spouse versus actual. And in the case, there's a there's a situation where uh, Paris is a very high power distance and a very high the hierarchical society one of the values and in the case you'll see the right is four seasons at four seasons we demonstrate our beliefs most meaningfully in the way we treat each other and by the example we set for one another in all our interactions with our guests customers business associates and colleagues we seek to deal with others and listen to this carefully we seek to deal with others as we would have them deal with us so if I am dealing with, it, with respect, I will also expect the same thing. So they talk about an incident where, you know, outside that hotel, George, hotel that uh, Four Seasons was taking over management of, they have a very famous restaurant. Their restaurant has a long queue. People are waiting outside to get into the restaurant. But the moment the general manager walks in with his friends, he doesn't have to stand in a queue, he doesn't have a reservation, but he's just walked in and he and his friends are given a table immediately. But what is the message that you are sending? On one hand, you are saying that we seek to deal with others as we would have them deal with us. So would you be okay going to a restaurant, waiting for an hour to see that the table you were waiting for is being taken over by a senior executive of that company, would you feel nice? Of course you wouldn't feel nice. So what people write and what people practice is spoused versus actual vision. The moment I don't practice what I preach, mission, mission values becomes just a piece of paper that's uh, or a picture that's there on in front of my desk or on the wall of a in the office of an organization. So, when you look at your vision, mission values, ensure that the actual vision and the spouse vision are the same. That you can actually practice what you are preaching. 
common mistake that a lot of companies do. You know, a lot of companies, if you go to their website, you'll see in their website it's written that we will be the best in customer service, we'll be the best in employee engagement, and so on and so forth. But actually, they are not able to do it. So there's a huge gap. Read the case study, and Professor Nagarajao has kindly agreed to circulate the case study amongst all of you. Please do read it. It's an interesting case. It talks a lot about culture and how culture also needs to play an important role in strategy development. The second pitfall I'm going to talk about is about measurement systems. Is your vision, can you draw a list of five measurements that will tell you whether your vision has been achieved or not? If you can, then it's a good vision statement. If you can't, then you may be, you know, there are vision statements like, oh, we want to do good for everybody. Now, that can be a vision statement for a telecom company, for an academic institution, for any company, you can go and waste that vision statement, but it doesn't make a difference. So, General Motors. General Motors, in the earlier part, 2002, 2003, at that time, they had a vision statement. GM's vision is to be the world leader in transportation products and related services. We will earn our customers' enthusiasm through continuous improvement driven by the integrity, teamwork, and innovation of GM people. Sounds good, pompous. What I want to do is clear, but you know that element of is it simple? Bear in mind that a vision has to go down to the last employee in the value chain. Is it simple enough? Can everybody understand it? Can you remember it? You know, TCS, it's been 12 years since I left TCS, but I still remember the old vision, top 10 by 2010. It was so easy. But this general motors vision is not as easy and is not as quantifiable as it should have been. GM also understood this. But they changed it. Currently, today, if you go to General Motors, their vision is our vision is a world with zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. What does that mean? Will they ensure zero crashes? So they will make such good cars you know, using IoT, using artificial intelligence, using various sensors that everybody is safe, zero crashes. You know, like an aircraft has got that proximity alert. An airline, another airplane comes within a certain distance, similarly. Zero emissions. What are they saying? That they are going to move from internal combustion engines to a completely electric vehicle and zero congestion. It's zero congestion, but I don't know how they'll achieve it, but it's it's quantifiable, it's easy to understand. And you know. Even by reading it for once and twice, you'll be able to remember it. And tomorrow also, if somebody asks you, so what was the James vision? You'll be able to tell you, oh, something about zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero transition, I'm sure. So it has to be simple. It has to be easy to understand. So GM learned from their complicated statement and made it easy. Let's look at the other three pitfalls. The first one is too short term. You know, sometimes I make my vision statement three years, two years. Now, let's say a steel company, a steel company, the steel cycles are 10 years, 11 years, six years, seven years. How can I do a vision statement for three years? On the other hand, if you, if you are a company in a high tech space, you can have a three year vision because every six months the technology is changing. Or it's too long term. Similarly, a technology company having a 20 year vision. Apparently, Panasonic has a 100 year vision. It's interesting, just go and see. It's more of a purpose rather than a vision. Purpose can be long term, but vision has to be quantified. Too ambitious, a statement that targets zero defects. You know, you don't believe it. It's zero defects. And the logos on your right, I want to tell you two stories about it. 
So Sony in the 90s, when they were publicizing their music systems, they always said Sony is number two. You know why? Who was number one? Any guesses on who was number one? Put it in the chat window. Any guesses? Who was number one? Sony Music Systems. Who was number one? Any guesses? Let's see who was number one. Is there any? So nobody is guessing who was number one. So I'll tell you, Sony said only a live audience is number one. You can't, you can't have somebody better than number one. Suravi says, HMB, Hari says, Bose, Pawan says, Bose. No, MGM, Panasonic, Bose, Motorola, a lot of good answers. But Sony's thing was that nobody except a live thing is better than Sony. So in a way they were saying it's number one, but they said that only a live concert can be better than Starbucks, I'm giving this example because you know one of our CEOs uh, of a Tata Group company, Chroma, the retail, he always says this. A target or a vision statement should always be like Starbucks, a sniffable. So what happens when you are you know in the vicinity of a Starbucks <coughs> store, you will always be able to smell that aroma of coffee. And that smell will make you do that extra effort of going to the store, buying a cup of coffee, paying for it, and then drinking it. So our targets, our vision statement should be like that. You know, it's it's sniffable, like the aroma of Starbucks coffee, but you have to go that extra mile to enjoy that cup of coffee. It won't come walking through. So again, going back to the pitfalls. Five pitfalls I've seen in vision statements. One, spouse versus actual. Are you practicing what you're teaching? Remember the four seasons case. Measurement systems. Is my vision mission value measurable? Remember General Motors. Three, two short term, steel company, three years. It's not possible. Two long term, technology company, 20 years. Oh. The whole world is changing. I'm too ambitious. If my employees, if my organization doesn't believe in it, I will not be able to attain that vision and thereby my purpose. So think of these five things that can go wrong with vision mission purpose value. I will stop here. I'm open to questions. I will first take up the questions that are already there. And then I'm open to questions. So Hari has a question. Businesses exist to serve. The businesses exist to serve the customer and generate profits and growth. How different can really be mission and core values for companies when the objective of any business is largely the same? Hari, good point. But I would like to correct your first statement. Businesses don't exist merely to serve customers and generate profits and growth. If you are in it for the long term, you will have to look at the triple bottom line philosophy. What does the triple bottom line philosophy say? People, profit and planet. What does it mean? People, the people I'm working with, people, the communities I'm serving, Profit, of course, profit is required because if I don't have profit, how will I generate value? How will I sustain? And third is people profit planet. What I am doing is it good for the long term? So, mission, vision, mission, core values for companies can be very different. For example, HCL, the, the IT company that India has, one of the big IT companies, their the former CEO Shiv Nadar's philosophy was that employees come first. His view was that if I take care of my employees, employees will take care of my customers, thereby my shareholders will actually be taken care of. 
So mission and mission will be very different for companies because it depends on the industry I am in. If, I, if you just go back and do the retail example that I gave. So Trent wanted to do this by constantly refreshing fashion. TCS wanted to do this by constantly reinventing itself, by making cutting edge, breeding edge technology and so on. So it will be different. Values can be similar, but again, each company has a different value. BlackRock, think of the first example, one of the first examples I gave you. BlackRock's vision was to create financial equity for everybody. But their values may be very different. And I'm not for a moment saying that values will be the only goody goody statements. You can have a value saying that I want to be innovative. For example, I've not looked at the 3M company 3M values, but I'm sure innovativeness will be one of the key values. So it will be very different. And uh, you know, the examples I gave you are from different industries, different companies, different geographies, they are different. Surabhi has a question. Circumstances won't help us to achieve purpose to succeed in life. How to handle customers? Very, very interesting question. I'll just relate it to the organizations I've worked with and the organization I'm currently working with also. We are going through a transition. And how are we managing this transition? If I think of you know, three years, five years down the line, I probably get frustrated. So I look at the, I celebrate the small successes. And you know, I will relate it to a, a book I read uh, about five, six years ago. You know, it was about the mission to capture Osama bin Laden. And uh, the team leader of that uh, uh, US Navy SEALs uh, team that had gone to capture bin Laden, it's a, it's a kind of an autobiography of his. And he says that the day they got the green signal to capture bin Laden, he said that all of us were very nervous. We didn't know what to do because the moment we were thinking of the larger picture, we were getting very nervous and sad and scared and so on. So what he said, he did, and that's what was taught to them in the uh, US Navy SEALs training, that in such cases, take small steps, do what is your next step. And he says that we were not able to sleep, we were not able to focus. So we started taking small steps, one step at a time. It was nine o'clock in the morning. So I need to finish my breakfast. So what is it? My whole energy I was focusing on reaching that table in the buffet and getting my omelet and bread. So like this, when you feel frustrated, break down your purpose into small, small targets, yearly, monthly, do that. And then you will realize that once you achieve those targets, those small targets, you will feel that, oh, I have accomplished, so I am on my way to achieving my purpose. Then you will feel happy. If you just think of the long-term purpose, it's natural. Organizations, human beings, everybody will face, uh, uh, be frustrated. Second question that should be, you have how to handle struggle and motivate it every day to achieve purpose in our life. Similar answer. Similar answer. Small targets. Oh. Yeah. Yes, Rakhi. Sort of a moment, just a moment. Extremely sorry for the interruption. But uh, before you take up the next question, I would like all my participants to download the certificate from the chat box below. Thank you, Rakhi. So yes, you Yanjara, question. Thank you. Yanjara, uh, your question, I have great respect for Tata for maintaining high ethics and values for a long time. But of late, I felt Tata should have seriously entered into the business of multi-speciality hospitals to serve the needy or poor. Good question. And Yanjarappa, you'll be happy to know that you know, Tata, Tata trusts. You know, Tata, the ownership is very interesting. 66% of Tata Sons is owned by Tata Trusts. And Trusts plows back all the money into various social upliftment projects, nation building projects. So a lot of that is currently going into, we don't publicize it that much. It's going into cancer treatment. There's a state-of-the-art cancer hospital that has been built in uh, Calcutta. There's one in New Bombay also. There's already one existing in Parel. And for this COVID treatment, there's a company that's been brought up for called Tata MD, Tata Medical and Diagnostics, which has innovated a cheap, easy to understand, easy to detect COVID uh, detection kit. 
which is also being CRISPR, which is also being utilized. So a lot of this work is happening. We may not be publicizing it so much, but be rest assured, we are staying true to our purpose and doing as much as we can. But yes, we have not got full hog into the hospital way because of strategic reasons. We have just decided that we'll go through the Tata Trust way to do it. Sharath has a question. Mission statement defines on how the things are managed to achieve mission. Can we set some objective kind of mission with numerical target settings? See, as I said, this is what I have seen. I have seen that mission is more of the numerical quantifiable target and mission supports me, guides me on how to do it. That's the way I have always seen my organizations do it. Second question from Yanjara Pras, sustainable business models survive because of good employees who are well aligned with organizational strategy. Do you think there is a change required in our basic teaching and corporate policies going forward? Employee engagement is key. And as I give you the example of Shiv Nathar and HCL, he said that I have to first take care of my employees. If I take care of my employees, everything else will be taken care of. So yes, Employee policies are changing. What motivates employees are changing a lot. I'll give you one example. You know, when when I started working for us, the employer brand. When I joined the Tata in two thousand two, it was a proud moment for me, my family, because you know, we were going into a big uh, business house and the most reputed business house in India. Today, when I talk to a lot of youngsters when I go for campus recruitments. The startup culture is something that really excites them. So employee needs are also changing and we also have to change. So you're right, corporate policies have to change. Each organization has to take that ownership. Devo Priyo Bhaduri asks me about Tata Dokomo. I, I have joined Tata Teleservices just a year and a half back after we exited Dokomo. What went wrong? A lot of things went wrong. Partly our mistake, partly the environment. A lot of things didn't work out the way we expected. Mission and mission statements were aligned, yes. But somewhere I think we did not execute the strategy well. And we can't shy away from that responsibility. The strategy was right. The mission, vision, values were right, but it was a. There were various mistakes, and you know it's impossible to answer this question in a minute or two. There were multiple things that went wrong, and which is why we are now rejuvenating the company, and we'll be happy to know that you know the company is back on a growth phase. We have moved away from mobility today. We are only on enterprise, and we are doing a. We're back on a growth path. Gary says, thank you for your wonderful insights, Mr. Chakrabarti. My question is, can the vision and mission statement of an organization change? Oh, yes, yes, of course. But if you change your vision too much, then something's wrong with the original vision statement that you did. So you can't change it every year. Mission, you can't change it every year. That's why when you do it, it has to be a long-term thing. Long-term is not 30, 40 years, but at least five years. It has to be like that. Otherwise, it's your annual operating plan. Nagesh says, is there a company whose mission or vision was not that great, but still succeeded greatly and vice versa? See, uh, maybe they had not written it down in that way, Amazon, for example, they may not have written down their mission, mission statements successfully and surely they found their way. And vice versa, you'll find many examples. Satya might give you an example. Satya is a great example. Their mission, mission statements, their espoused mission, mission statements were very different, but the practice was very different. Okay. So I think. Sanu, I've got a last, last question. Sure, sir. So, um, you know, there are a lot of companies and Enron is a good example where um, they called their meeting rooms as war rooms. And then they said, let's kill the opposition. And you have quite a few companies that do that. They bring in a lot of, uh, you know, military terminology. It's, it's absolutely fine for the military. 
uh, say they are going into a mission or they're going into uh, a war zone or whatever. But what are your thoughts on corporates using that kind of very aggressive language? Um, say in your own company, do you have pe people who are that aggressive? Is it is it in your value system? Is it accepted or is it frowned upon? Uh, some some insights, please. So so thank you sir, for asking this. In fact, this is a debate we were having in the morning today in our organization. See what what I have experienced is. You know, there's an optimal balance you need to have. I mean, war rooms today, a lot of these military terminologies are used. You know that, uh, in fact, uh, one of my senior colleagues in my current organization, he's a retired Air Force uh, officer. So he keeps on telling me we should do pincer movement. We should do pincer movement, you know, attacking from both sides. And you have to, one, take it in the right spirit. Two, if your value system is very strong, then that will balance that aggression that you have. Today, being aggressive is good. You know, and I had attended a talk by uh, K.V. Kamath, the former chair, chairman of ICICI Bank. And he was saying that if today you don't do this invention, within 30 days, somebody else will do it and uh, deploy it and go away. So it is important to be aggressive. But in the group also, in the Tata group also, that's one area where we are building upon that we have to be more aggressive. But aggression doesn't mean that you kill competition. You, uh, you, you, you kind of I mean, by hook or crook you win the war. It's not like that. You are balanced out by the value systems you have. So, for example, in our group, if I speak about the Tata companies, our aggression will be balanced by the values we have. The core value of integrity, the core value of unity, the core value of responsibility. These things will balance the aggression that we have. So it's important to have aggression, but you need to have a strong set of values which will help you balance out that and ensure that you don't do an enron, you don't do a satyam. So that's those are some of my thoughts. Sir. Thank you. This. Yeah. yeah. Srinivasan has a comment. Yes, we must get our mission and mission right and should never be changed. I would say should never be changed. It will undergo a change, but you should not change it, you know, frequently. Then it it becomes an annual operating plan or your annual goals or your KRAs or your goal sheets. So that's that's all I had to share. Uh, if there are any further questions, I will be happy to answer that. But I know it's getting late for all of you. So I am open to taking up any questions. You can write to me. You can reach out to me. My contact details are given there. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. So I'll be happy to interact with you, learn from you. You know, reverse mentoring is a great thing that uh, I have experienced. So, uh, especially with my teenage daughter, I do experience a lot of reverse mentoring. Whatever I tell her, she kind of has an opposing view to it. So I'll be happy to learn from all of you. Any questions you have, I'll be happy to clarify, discuss, engage with you. So, Thank you very much, and uh, back to you, Raki. Uh, if there's any other thing that Professor Nagaraj would like to add, the session. And uh, thank you a lot for answering all the questions in the chat box below, like the most of most of them. And uh, I would like my friend Rakshita to move forward for the vote of thanks. So good evening again. On behalf of Diana Sagar University and distinguished speaker, distinguished speaker series committee, it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks. My ask is with a lot of gratitude and respect for our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Saurav Chakraborty, sir, for not only sparing his valuable time for us, but also for enlightening us with his commendable talk on the subject. It gave us the deep insights into the topic and also revealed some interesting facts. Indeed, you have put your best efforts to make this event unforgettable, sir, and thank you for that. I would also like to thank our team, Professor Captain Nagra Subharao, sir, for giving us this opportunity to organize this webinar. I would also like to thank all the faculty of Tayanan Sagar University. My heart goes out to thank each and every participant for accepting our invitation and attending this session. Well, an event like this can't happen overnight. 
the way star trolling weeks ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be backed up by a team of wonderful faculty along with very motivated and dedicated members of the DSS student committee. I would like to express my gratitude to them. I would also like to thank Mr. Imtia Sir for his assistance in organizing the event. Once again, thank you so for this very informative and wonderful session. With this, I'd like to conclude my vote of thanks. And a gentle reminder to all the participants to please fill the feedback form through the link provided in the chat box and get your participation certificate. Thank you again and have a great evening. And I would like to remind everybody that we have a continuing lecture on strategy tomorrow. While I thank um, Saurav Chakravarti for making this wonderful presentation on a vision to values. Thank you so much, Saurav, for your time and um, hope to meet you one of these days. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And I'll thank be happy to engage. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Dhanabad, sir. Dhanabad. <laughs> So, 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 yeah. so I don't, I don't think Sa oh, Saurav lived in Calcutta. He went to. I Calcutta. am. I'm born and brought up in Calcutta. Okay, mm. wonderful, great. So, also, I had posted the Four Seasons uh, case study. If any of you want it, please write to uh, either of us, Professor VV Rajan at VV Rajan at dsu .edu .in, and we'll be glad to share the case with you, or you can write to me as well. Thank you. And read that case, it's an interesting case. All of you will enjoy that. Thank you.